Good morning. It's good to worship the Lord, isn't it? I love it. to because but God chose you to be here because God says everything happens for a reason so if everything happens for a reason you're here by a divine appointment and the people that did not choose to get up come church this morning maybe they don't need this word wave at me wave at me wave at me there was an old man that passed away and went to heaven and God sent him back and you ought to hear his testimony he said that he was standing on a short line and there was a long line. He said, and he got to notice and everybody in the long line would get to the pearly gate so they would drop off into a hole. He said, and what, it was, what was weird about it was is he was on the short line and he was a minister of the Lord. It don't mean if you're a minister, you're going to make it to heaven. Hello, somebody. I question that sometimes about my own self. But he said they was wrapped and whatever they was consumed with. Some was wrapped with money. Some was wrapped with their career. But they had no time for God. I think that it's so simple that sometimes we need to realize the realness of the kingdom of God and the realness of the Lord Jesus Christ and Putting him first, putting him first is very important. And sometimes I don't mean that religiously. Sometimes I mean that, you know, throughout your day that we need to talk to God and communicate with God because if you really surrender to his will, hello, somebody, if you really surrender to his will, which we're going to James chapter four, if anybody wants to go ahead and find that, it's toward the back. It's right before you get to... Peter, well, if you go to Peter, you pass James. I'll give you a moment to get there. Uh, I want this to be graspable. How many, how many have heard me say from this pulpit, resist the enemy and he must flee? Okay, we talk about that, we say that, but how do actually, how do we do that? Does anybody know? This is an open Prayer, that's, that's pray. That's, that's good. Some of you are going to, it's so simple. Some of you are going to get a hold to this, and this is not going to be a deep word, but this is going to be a life-changing word. Hello, somebody. But sometimes the sovereignty of God will change your life. He'll, he'll, he'll consume you, he'll wrap you, and he loves you. And some of you need to know this morning, no matter what you've done or how you've acted, he still loves you. I know that's hard for some of you to believe. I'm talking to a bunch of redneck hillbillies and hicks in here. I know who I'm talking to. So, you know, if you really submit to God, say submit to God. If you really submit to God, then you got to submit to his will, his plan, and his purpose for your life. And that's where we're at this morning. And it's easy to do. It's not a laborious thing. If you've been churched or if you've been hurt in a church or if you've, you've, you've experienced that in your life, I want you to, this morning, I want you to let it go. I want you to tell God, say, I'm going to let it go. 
I'm going to let it go because there's, there's hurts, there's things that people do to you that God didn't have anything to do with, but you got to let it go so you can enter your future with him. You, you can't hang on to the hurts in the past and how people treated you and how people talk to you. People in the church talk about you sometimes too, and sometimes it kind of hurts. And then when you really get to the point where you really submit yourself to God, what does submit mean? It's the same word that God uses in his word, wives submit to your husband. But first of all, let me, let me help you. First of all, the man, the problem with marriages today, and I'm not getting into marriage ceremony on that, but this is, this is where I'm going. I, I, I'm not trying to get into that, but, but here it is. We have husbands trying to get their wives to submit to them when the husband ain't submitted to God. It don't work. It don't work. It'll fall apart. It'll never work because unless the man begins to submit to the Lord, the, the man really don't know how to treat the lady. Oh, y'all, you women should have been. Y'all should have been on that. So first of all, the Bible says in verse 7, submit yourselves to God. Now listen, right under this, it talks about resisting the enemy. So here's the deal. If we don't submit ourselves to God, the enemy has room to have a play day with us. It don't mean he can destroy you. It means he can try to talk you into destroying yourself because he don't have the keys to life and death no more. Now, listen, I'm not a big preacher about warfare because I know in the New Testament, God give angels to do our warring for us, and we have angels all around us. But let me explain something to you. Sometimes we got to stand up and be bold. Sometimes we got to talk, and sometimes we got to not look at the flesh and blood, but we got to talk to the principalities and powers by the pulling down of strongholds. The Bible says the kingdom suffer violent, but the violent take it by force. So if we're supposed to take it by force, some things we got to bow up at. Now, I know y'all don't really have a trouble bowing up. Read the, next, read the next part, Earl. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay, first, first, let's don't go past this. This is a simple message. You're going to get this. I'm getting this. I'm receiving it just like you are. I've been, I've been meditating on this all week. First of all, submit ourselves to God. Nothing else under this verse. That's the reason God gives his verses. It, actually, the, in the original scrolls, they didn't have verses. It was just chapters. It was just whole pages of scrolls written down. And they translated it six times before it got to the King James Version. That's the reason there was a lot of words that was changed and things that would, that's the reason the Bible says study show yourself approved because you have to go in and look at the real meaning of this. So first of all, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's talk about the word submission. The word submission in the original language means to come under. You can't have protection standing out here. And, and you hear preachers and, and people preach all the time, well, you know, I want a woman that'll stand by my side. That, that's not the way God sees you. He sees, God sees Jesus. He sees the Holy Spirit. He sees the man of his household. He sees the wife, and then he sees the children. Hello, somebody. Anytime you line up, it don't mean that you have rule over anybody. It means that you cover them with love. That's the difference that sometimes we get off on our teachings is because we want to think that submission means to rule over. No, 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 that's wrong. That's not the kingdom of God. My wife submits to me, but I don't rule over her. I pray for her and I cover her with God's grace and love and mercy. Hello, somebody. Because his favor as a family goes before us, but his goodness and mercy follows me. That's my wife goodness and mercy. Hello, somebody. Now, she's been off work for a little while, and we've tested out both of us being retired. <laughs> she, she had all she can stand. 
But I think we get along real well and, and we don't fight or feud or anything like that. And it's a blessing to, to run around and spend time with my wife and all that. But how many knows when she looks at you and says, you need to go on, just go to the church. Do your study and do whatever you do down there. Just go on to the church. How many knows that, that, that we, we have to have breaks sometime? Amen. Amen. You have to be real with one another. We need a breaker. The reason some of you get along as well as you do is because some of you work out of town. I know family members of mine, if they worked at home, they'd kill one another. Hello, somebody. But God's not like that. God has never, listen to this, it's a blessing. God has never got on my nerves. Now, I'm sure I've got on his a couple of times. I'm sure that there's been times where he's like, oh, Lord, Jesus, shut your eyes. You don't even want to see this. Shut your eyes. You don't want to see it. That boy's ignorant. He, look at him. Look at him. Oh, crazy. There's some things that I do, sometimes I don't, you know, I, 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 I probably shouldn't do it. And I'll, I'm quick to repent just as I'm well as I'm quick to forgive because I don't want anything held against me, so I don't want to hold anything against anybody else. And I'm not going to point the finger and judge at you. I'm not going to say you need to do this or you need to do that. I'm not going to judge you because the Holy Spirit is, will convict you in love, and he, he's a better job at straightening you out than I am. Praise the Lord. But see, some pastors think that they're supposed to straighten everybody's life out. That ain't me. I'm not sent here to straighten your life out. I'm here to sit here as the overseer of the soul to watch and to pray over and to ask God to bless you every day. And I do that. You say, well, pastor, you've never really talked to me. You've never shook my hand. I come to this church for a while now. You don't understand. I see your face up here on Sunday morning. I wake up on, on Sunday morning, on Monday morning, and I say, Lord, every face I saw, bless them. Listen, listen. You need to receive it. You need to wake up in the morning and say, I'm a child of God and I'm going to resist the enemy. The enemy is not welcome in my home because actually resist means to stand against boldly in the original language. Listen to it. I'm going to try to teach you a little bit of this today because I want you to, it's so simple. It means to stand against boldly. It means don't, actually in the original language, my translation of stand against is don't put up with. It's the same meaning. The same meaning is that you don't put up with the enemy. Paul says that, you know what, I'm not ignorant of the devil's devices. Paul didn't give a lot of energy. Because, you know, the Bible says that what we should do is love the Lord with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our mind. But if you don't quit reading there and you read on down a little bit further, it says with all your strength. That means that we are to give our strength and our emotions to God. Because he's better at working things out in our life than we are. He can put your marriage back together. He can put your kids back together. Hello, somebody. And let me tell you something. The enemy's not going to come and knock on your door and say, look, I'm the enemy. I'm sent. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to destroy your family. He's not going to do that because the enemy's like a snake. He's sly. Matter of fact, to resist the enemy, some things you need to pay attention to because he'll run over you. And he don't want you to know it's him. Because listen to me, he can't speak the truth. He has to speak a lie because he's the father of lies. So what he can try to do is, is if he can't get to you, he'll try to use someone in your family to get to you. But it's not against flesh and blood. Hello, somebody. Hello, hold on. Sometimes you need to speak to the atmosphere around you. I speak to the atmosphere in this church and over each of our lives. We resist the enemy in the name of Jesus. His presence has no Authority here and his presence can't camp here. It has to leave in Jesus name. It has to in Jesus name. Because what we do is we have the authority to stand against it and don't put up with it. Now, let me explain something to you. If you will set some standards in your own life that you do not put up with this. And you stand up for God, God will stand up for you. Because if you keep reading on this, just stay there. I'll show you. I'll do it. Huh? Oh, oh, no, oh, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. It says, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. 
Hello, somebody. Look at here. Number eight, draw near to God and he will draw near to. That scripture blows my mind. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Which means how you respond to God is how God will respond to you. It means if you... Now, 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 I, I can see some of it on your faces. You're thinking about this. L let me help you theologically. Faith moves God. That's how simple it is. Faith moves God. If you submit to yourselves to the Lord... The enemy will try to attack from time to time, but you have to be on your guard. Don't put up with it, and you have to draw nigh to God because if you draw nigh to God, God is your strength. He's the one that provides for you. I see people all the time make a decision and didn't check with God about it. Then they get in the middle of a storm or in the middle of a mess, and they wonder, well, what's happening to me? Pastor, can you please pray for me? I said, well, how's this happening to me, Pastor? I just don't understand. I've been a pretty good old boy, you know. I just try to take care of my family and put food on the table, and then I don't know why all this is happening to me. And, and I'm like, you're in the middle of that. I said, what made that decision? Three months ago, why'd you make the decision that, that headed you in this direction? Well, pastor, I really don't know. You know, I thought it was a good idea. Really? Was it a God idea? Well, you know, pastor, I didn't check with him. But when I started to do it, I had something inside of me kind of thinking, well, I probably I shouldn't do that. And I kind of ignored that. And I went on, and I should have listened to my gut. Have you ever heard that? I said, honey, that wasn't your gut. That was God trying to tell you, don't get off in there. See, God, God wants us blessed. He wants to lead us. He wants to guide us. He wants to direct us. But we got to slow down sometimes and we got to listen. Even the Bible says that we should be slow to speak and quick to listen. So if we're quick to listen, we need to have God open our ears up and say, God, I want you to speak to me all the time. I want you to speak to me. Because I live this way. I can't live without God speaking to me. You can be at the front door and walk in and God can speak to me about you. Hello, somebody. Because God is that awesome. He loves us. And there's people this morning the Lord said was going to bring some things in here they need to turn loose of. And you've brought them in here from Sunday to Sunday to Sunday and you carry them out with you and he's sitting there with his arms wide open and saying, give it to me. And I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but I'm talking to somebody. You, God says, it's, don't carry it no more. Give it to me. You got to give me that issue because it's driving you crazy and there ain't nothing you can do about it and you can't straighten that person out. You got to give that person to me. You, like to ha you got to allow me to work it out in my timing and quit trying to do it in your timing. Oh, hello, somebody. I know I'm talking to a couple people. I may not be talking to all of you, but I'm talking to a couple of you. You say, well, Pastor, I see you preach that. Well, well yeah, uh-huh. But one of the things that God told me to tell you this morning is, this ain't a difficult thing. This ain't a difficult thing. It says, submit yourselves to the Lord. And then resist the enemy. How many, somebody say, God's got a God of order. He is, a God, he is a God of order. He's going to do it his way. So how is his way to do it? First of all, you have to submit to the Lord and say yes to him. You have to receive him as personal savior. Because if I draw nigh to him and he draw nigh to me, listen, I want to draw nigh to the place where the, the Bible says that if you love me, me and my father will come make home with you. That's an awesome piece of scripture right there. All he said, Jesus says, all you have to do is love me back because I loved you first. But what we do religiously is, is we look through all of our trials and our downfalls, how we've been bad and how we've been good. And, 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 and we, God's like, I'm not interested. Listen, I'll erase every bit of that. All you got to do is come to me. Let me in. 
Well, you don't understand, Pastor. I've been coming to church for quite a while. I know I'm saved. Have you let him in? Have you let him in? Have you let him in on the inside? Have you received him and the Holy Spirit to live and through your heart and in your soul? Because I'm going to tell you something. We are a working process. And once we submit ourselves to God, there's one thing that God does, and I want you to get a hold of this, is to bless your life. God will see how faithful you are. Hello, somebody. God loves faith. Remember this. And he loves faithfulness. I see young people, teenager stuff today, and I've been hanging out with a couple of them, helping my brother-in-law and them move, and there's a couple young men, one of them's 21, one of them's 19, and I've been talking to them. I've been examining their life, and they don't even know it. Don't you love doing that? It's fun, because I like to stick my finger in there and stir something up, you know, every once in a while. And I'll ask them questions like, boys, what do, want? Where you, what do you want to do? What's your career choice? Like, oh, right now we're just helping move. Well, uh, you ain't got no goals, dreams, ambitions. You don't, you don't have, what, you know, you don't, what, what, are you, what are you doing? Well, I sure would like to go bow hunting in the morning. And that's all they talk about is hunting all day long. I'm like, hmm. What you focus on consumes you. Well, I think I've preached that, Lord. They said, well, what do you think? I said, you need to, I said, let me ask you this. I said, you're 21 and you're 19. They said, yes, sir. At least they said, yes, sir. That's a step. Most people, young people don't even do that no more. I said, can you think into the future with me just for a moment? I said, can you just look into the future with me? I said, can we just, just stop and, and if Paul's here for a minute, they said, yeah, I'm a thirsty. I want to get a drink of water. I said, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. I said, just stop talking. Just don't, don't say nothing. Just don't say. I said, when you was a kid, did you have an imagination? We used to make mud pies and throw them at each other. I don't know if y'all did that. That black land out there in Breezy Acres, they stick together pretty good. I'm going to tell you that right now. And you know the one that put a rock in it, that was me. Because I just had that honoriness about me. God ain't stripped that out of me yet. And so I had both their attention. I said, I don't want you to think about drinking. I don't want you to think about nothing. I want you to just think into the future a little bit. I said, I want you to answer me one question, young men. Answer me one question. I said, if you'll answer me this one question, I said, I'll leave you alone. I won't say nothing else the rest of the day. They said, what? Shoot, preacher. That's what they said. Shoot, preacher. Go on and say, say something. I said, what are you going to do the day you turn 60? They said, huh? The day I turn 60? Well, we can't think that far ahead. I'm like, if you don't plan on it now, any road to get you there if you don't choose one. Hello, somebody. They said, what are you trying to say? I said, I want you to get hooked up with God. I want you to be a blessed life. I want you to look at something that's got a future in it. I said, young man, let me tell you something. I said, unless you learn to be faithful to whatever you start and you complete what you start, I said, you'll go through life being a quitter at everything, you, that, everything, everything that becomes challenging to you, you will quit. I said, quit's not in your vocabulary. It's not in God's vocabulary. I said, do you think that Jesus wanted to quit before he got to the cross? Do you think that the point where blood was rolling out of his pores and where they put that crown, I don't know if you've ever been poked with a thorn, but it comes festerous and it burns and it stings. They put hundreds of them together and they crammed them down on Jesus' head. Do you think the pain and the agony that he was going through that he ever once thought about giving up? Even come to the place where Peter talked to him and said, that, I'm, they're not going to get you. They're not going to get you. Peter, well, he quick to pull his sword. He, he'll fight. he fight. Listen to what he said. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, but you don't have the thoughts of the kingdom in mind. Why did he say Satan? It's because Satan was interfering with Peter's thoughts. That's where you have to resist the devil in your head. And you have to resist some of the thoughts 
that the enemy tries to throw at you, you have to resist them in your head. Because the easy way is not always God's way. The faithful way and the loving and graceful way is God's way. So what I want you to get this morning is I want you to take this. Stand against and don't put up with bad thoughts. I preached this whole message to get to this one point. This one I want you to take home with you. And the enemy can't have it. You do not put up with, and some of you, it's okay to get redneck. It's okay to get a little upset. Jesus said there's nothing wrong with getting mad. He said just don't sin when you get mad. This is what he's talking about. Submit to God and resist the enemy. It doesn't work if you don't submit to God. You can resist the enemy in the flesh all day and he don't really care. But if you stand up and you boldly say, I'm a child of God, that anointing and that spirit lives inside of you and you stand up to the enemy and you resist him and the Bible says God will arise and his enemies will be scattered. Matter of fact, when the anointing arise upon you, they're not, you're no longer your enemies, they're God's enemies. And God said, if you're persecuted because of my name's sake, count yourself blessed because it ain't you that coming after anyway. It's me that they don't like. And anytime Jesus would go into the synagogue or anywhere he would go, he would come to the place where they'd be demon-possessed people and they would begin to speak and Jesus would boldly stand up and tell them to shut up. Listen to me, guys. We have the same authority. I've been in church services. I, I, could, I could tell you stories that would just flip your wig. But I don't give the enemy no room. If the enemy try to manifest, shut him up. He don't have no authority here. You hear me? Let me just speak over your life for a moment. The enemy don't have no authority in your life and in your home. He doesn't have any authority in your choices. Because you're going to have the mind of Christ and you're going to make the right choices. Because what we've done is we spent a lifetime making bad choices. Now we need to submit to God and make the right choices. And we need to pray before we make our choices. And we need to allow God to lead us, guide us, and direct us. Because if we do it God's way, we're going to walk in God's blessings. And you're not going to have to sit and cry for two or three hours in prayer to ask God to bless you. Because you're going to be blessed and highly favored because you're doing it His way. And then you wake up in the morning, you put some praise and worship music on and start praising Him and thanking Him. Him for what he has done and what he's going to do because your faith is in him and your expectation is in him and when you wake up in the morning you resist the enemy he has to flee he can't mess with you he can't mess with your family some of you need to reclaim your children and resist the enemy over them and some of you got young children you need to resist the enemy over them now And I'm going to tell you something, when you, when you proclaim it and you resist it, he has to flee. It's a matter of time. What that does is it, it, when you stretch your faith toward your children, it unlocks God. And he says, listen, he talks to, Jesus talks to God on the throne room. He said, no, 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 listen, listen, listen. I see the situation and the situation ain't nothing. But mom and daddy just prayed and agreed. And now listen, now I'm, I'm going to work. Mom and daddy, you just be at peace. You just be at rest. Don't you worry about them. I'm going to start working on them. I'm going to start dragging. I'm going to start putting this over here. I'm going to bring them to me. He's not drawing them to you, mom and daddy. He's drawing them to him. And their life will be changed. Y'all need to see this in the spirit realm. Their life will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And you said, God, I just can't wait no more. I want it to happen. You said, hey, no, 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 no. Listen, listen. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying this. Listen. Mom and daddy, leave it, leave it, leave it to the Lord. Leave it to the Lord because he's teaching them things as he brings them. And if you cut the process and the timing off of God, they're not going to learn what they need to learn when they get to where they need to be. In Jesus name. They've got some lessons and things that they have to learn. Because God sees their perverted mind. And he's going to begin to transform it into the mind of Christ. I've seen him do it in my family. It's awesome to watch God be God. I want you to leave this morning blessed. 
I thank God for his goodness. God told me this morning on the way over here, he said, tell them this is not complicated. It's simple. Walk in joy, walk in peace. Now, the elders and the lay pastors are going to be over in front of the wagon. If I spoke to you this, if the Lord spoke to you this morning, forget me, take me out of the equation. If the Lord dealt with you this morning because I felt real strong that there was a couple of people that's been dragging some stuff, they need to leave it at the altar. Meet the elders over here right after service and pray. And pray with us and let's, let's, just, let's let that go. Let's trust God with it. God can handle it. You say, well, pastor, you know, I, I, I submitted to God at once, and, and, and I kind of, I've kind of drifted away from that, and he's not number one in my life no more. You know what? Come pray with us. Come pray with us, and let's get it back on track. Let's get back on track. You're a leader. You're an influencer. You're an influencer into the school you go to, into the job you go to. Wherever you're at, you're an influencer. Just your presence being there will help the business because you're a child of God. You're a child of God. I know they talk crazy. But you know what? Your, God wanted your presence there. It's really put you there. Don't give up. When things seem to be falling apart all around you, focus and look up to the heavens and say, Lord, I need you to guide me. I need you to lead me. I stand for righteousness. I stand for love. Let me be more lovable. Let me be kind. Let me keep no record of wrong. Make me into the man you want me to be. Lead and guide and direct me. I want to be found faithful at your business, Lord. I talked to those young men about a long-term commitment. I had the right to talk to them about a long-term commitment. That was one of the things that my daddy instilled in me since I was a kid, is to be faithful and finish what you start. I served 30 years at TxDOT. Do you believe there were times I did not want to get up and go to work? Hello, somebody. I'm just like y'all. Y'all just like me. Hello, brother and sister. But those words in my daddy's voice would, as a child, I would remind myself or be reminded the Lord would, would tell me, Whatever you start, you finish. There was a whole lot of up and downs, a whole lot of up and downs, a whole lot of up and downs, a whole lot of up and downs. Do you know that the average churchgoer commits theirself to a church for three years? And that's about as long as they stay in a church. The, the average churchgoer, not y'all, scientifically, I mean, it, it's proven all the studies, church studies that they did. About three years is about all anybody can stay committed. They find some kind of excuse or something to, to leave the church. Did God tell them to leave? No, they just, they just they, they had to go because they have trouble staying committed long term. If you want to be blessed, you submit yourself for eternity to God. And he'll bless you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll never let you down. He'll direct you. Well, with that being said, I have one order of business to do. Elders and lay pastors, if you'll come forth. Anybody get anything out of this? Amen. Praise the Lord. I, it's simple. It's simple. Submit yourself to God. Resist the enemy. Draw nigh to God. God will draw nigh to you. I've been in prayer, and I know we got some elders that are out, lay pastors that are out this morning. But I've been in prayer. We've, uh, we've been, you know, uh, without a youth pastor. We, we, uh, we set in a youth pastor last week. Praise the Lord. Thank God for him and his wife. Y'all pray for him. Hello? And for you others that God has sent to help with the youth, quit holding back. Go on, get in. Help this couple and do what God wants you to do. But also uh, been praying about another elder in this church that to sit in and to, uh, to establish and complete the leadership. Uh, I believe this is a calling from God. I believe that it is uh, 
something that God speaks. It's not something here at this church we vote on. And I don't mean that in an ugly or bad way. I just mean that we go to prayer and we decide. Basically, the pastor goes to prayer. And then I talk to the associate pastor about it. And then we prayerfully decide who's supposed to serve as elders, lay pastors. And more and more, <clears throat> looking at Scripture, I love to find someone that God has spoke to me about because when, when God speaks to me about somebody, their life lines up with the Scripture. And when their life lines up with the Scripture, I know that I heard God from the right place. So I want to set in another elder this morning. This will be the completion of the eldership for at least two more years. And uh, I told them at the elders meeting the other night that if you get tired and weary, come talk to me. And uh, if you need a break, get over it. And uh, elders and lay pastors, that's a calling. These guys are called to do this. So uh, I want to pray for this gentleman. Uh, Gary, would you come on up here? And uh, your wife, would you, would you come with him? I want to. <laughs> He's going to be our elder at Open Range Cowboy Church. And uh, God spoke this to me. And then I called them in the office and asked them to pray about it. And he's like, I'm kind of quiet, Pastor. And I'm like, what's that got to do with it? Y'all just pray and uh, agree with me here. Yeah. Gary, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, do you accept the responsibility of elder of Open Range Cowboy Church of North Texas? We've, you've studied and talked about the scripture and we've talked about this and we both agree that this is God's choice, not ours. So I set you in the office of an elder at Open Range Cowboy Church of North Texas and the authority of the Holy Spirit and we give God praise for it. And may your mind never have any doubt or hold back in it. I pray, Lord, that you just step forth in the calling that God's called you to do. And I pray that you lay hands on people. The sick will recover, be made whole. And uh, you would be an encouragement to all that you come in contact with. And uh, we set you in the office. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen, and God bless you. Give him a hug, guys. Stand to your feet. I want to pray for you. Somebody say, my life ain't falling apart. It's falling together. In Jesus' name. It's amazing how God rips some things away from us when we really get serious and submit to him. There's, there's certain friends and certain things in our life that God just begins to rip out of our life and, and, and we're like hurting and screaming and hollering and kicking like a little baby that gets the milk taken away from us. You know, when mama took the bottle away from me, I was totally upset. Every morning I'd get up and drink milk because I'm a milk baby. You know, it's amazing how some of the things that we, we, we march forward in, it's a blessing. It's, a, it's awesome. To be unique. We're all unique. We're all uniquely made in his image. It's great to be a Christian. It's a lot of fun to be a Christian. I remember my mom telling me, y'all thought this was over, didn't you? I remember my mom telling me that when, when the soap would get down so small in the bathroom, I'd throw it in trash, open up a new bar. And my mother, she, she would come in there and she had raised cane with me and she would tell me, when you start buying that yourself, you quit throwing that little bar away. Well, now I'm grown, got my own house and my own wife and my own children. That bar gets so low, I think of mama every time I throw it in the trash. 
Some things never change, do they? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come to you. We love you. We thank you for a sense of humor. We thank you for your laughter. We thank you, Father, that this is so simple. I pray that we all submit to the Lord, that God, we are submitted to you, and I thank you that you would lead us and guide us and direct us, and you'd guard us from all evil. I pray that everywhere we go, evil cannot attach itself to us or our family. I pray, God, that whatever the devil has stole, that you will restore it and bring it back to us, and we give you praise for that in advance. Know that you're going to work it out into our future, and we're going to walk in your blessings. Now, Father, I pray that we have a good family time today. I pray, God, that you just draw us together with our families, and we enjoy today. And I pray that we get some rest today, and I pray, God, for peace and love and grace to surround our homes, release the angels of peace over our homes, and we thank you for it. Let it be a peaceful day, Lord. Let it be an enjoyable week. We give you all the praise for it because we know that you have gone before us and prepared the way. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and thank you for being here today.